agenda yet. Um, I mean, I think we need a, a motion to approve our agenda. Perhaps. Here, there. Okay. Yeah. Anybody? I'll move to motion to approve move. agenda. Oh, I'm happy to move. Kip. Okay, Kip. Second. Anyone? And Bill. Kathy. Kathy. Huh? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see you here at the same time. Oh, okay. okay. Like, which Kathy? Uh, um. <laughs> well, I think I need to explain the history before other people talk. Probably. Uh. Yes, definitely. Yes. So, um, so that's not gonna. That's not in order of um, of speaking. Uh, okay. We we discussed it already. Okay. Uh, so, um, I I'm assuming uh, no one is in opposition to approving the agenda. Um, and we will approve it via unanimous consent. Um, so um, our program today is one that we're pretty excited about. And honestly, it's one that I was hoping we, um, now in hindsight, it's, well, why didn't we do this a little bit more before the election? Uh, but I think it's gonna be a really interesting and robust discussion, um, just because there's a lot of information um, kind of out there and a lot of information on different sides. Um, so, uh, we're going to start with Kathy, actually. Um, our program today is the 30-foot height limit in Point Loma and OB, past, present, and future. Um, so Kathy is the author of a forthcoming book. Or, is it already out, or is it uh, coming out? Yeah, actually, I don't know if people can see that. Uh, it, it's called San Diego Sunset Cliffs. So this goes back to 1900. And um, this is my seventh book I've written. And I wrote two other books on the history of Ocean Beach before this one, <coughs> and one fun one of Ocean Beach, Ocean Beach, uh, weird, wild, and wonderful. So anyhow, um, I, I'm a historian. I sit on the board of the Ocean Beach Historical Society. I also sat on the Peninsula Planning Board at one time. Um, I ran for office for District 2 in 2005, and I've been very active in pol politics off and on over the last <laughs> 25 years. So. Um, it kind of comes and goes <laughs> depending if I'm busy writing a book. <laughs> Great. Um, so uh, since we'll be talking about, you know, past and present and future, um, we can start with you, Kathy. Um, I'd just like to, a quick word on the rest of our guests here, just so everybody kind of knows what's up in terms of the slate, um, Kathy. And then um, we do have uh, Dr. Jen Campbell, our, our city council member. Um, and then another Kathy, uh, who is from the Midway Planning Group. Uh, and then uh, Mandy Havlick, who um, many of you know as a club member, she sits on the Peninsula Planning Board. Uh, she is an involved uh, mom here in OB and a member, member of our club, as well as being on, on the Peninsula Planning Board. So you will recognize her as a familiar face too. Um, all right, um, so uh, Kathy, you are up first. Um, and then after that will be um, Dr. Jen um, with the other Kathy, um, and then Mandy, and then we'll have some questions. Um, how did you guys want to do it? Do you want to do questions after everybody talks? I think that that That's might be kind of better, best right? To have everything covered, yeah. Yeah, let's do questions after everybody talks. Okay, um, so Kathy, you're up, go ahead. Okay, uh, explaining, you know, 50 years of the 30 foot height limit, coastal height limit is gonna, I'm gonna have to talk pretty fast here. But anyhow, this is the original uh, flyer that the, um, the vote group was one of their names of the originators. And I really wanna give you a brief history on the people that started this because they weren't a bunch of wackos. They were actually a lot of brilliant people and uh, some of you know some of these people. This is Alex Leondas. He was the chair of the planning board. We uh, had a 40 year anniversary at the, San, at the Ocean Beach Historical um, going over this with Alex. Slow down just, well, yeah, okay. Here's, a, here's part of our group. We had a packed room and uh, we had cake to celebrate. Cake seems to bring them in. <laughs> but, uh, and this is Pat James, the president uh, at the time of the Ocean Beach Historical. Um, Alex was the speaker and he went into the beginning of it. And um, I had the honor over the years of meeting like eight of the originators of the 30 foot. I became close friends with several of them. Mignon Shear, who was 
was an amazing woman. We had a talk with her. She was a Rosie the Riveter. She was a teacher. She was one of the high ups on the Sierra Club. She was on the Point Loma Planning Board in her 80s. And every three to five years, basically, her and others of us had to uh, defend the 30 foot height limit. It, it's It's got a long history of people wanting to bring it down. But a lot of people support it and um that's 30 screens it could be more people <laughs> still but uh this is this picture here shows some of the first buildings that they either put in or were trying to put in but let me go back what was happening and some of my books talk about this in the 60s late 60s a lot was happening they wanted to put a yacht basin in ob and get rid of the beaches and they were putting jetties in and Ocean Beach is like the Berkeley or Santa Cruz of Southern California. People were bringing the boulders back on the beach at night. They had fights with the police. They had stickers and all the windows around here. But they also wanted to do a high rises around this yacht base and, and Ocean Beach fought it. Uh, in my book, I talk about um, in the 70s and, and 80s, groups of people, they, the Ocean Beach formed the first community elected. There were planning boards before that, but that was the first community elected planning board. And it was a big deal. And a lot of people participated in it. But a group of attorneys actually filed a lawsuit um, on Sunset Cliffs that's in my book in 1983. But some of it had to deal with the armoring of the cliffs, but also the height limits was a concern. And these people were 50 years ahead of the curb on global warming because of scripts, they had things about cliff erosions, global warming in their lawsuit. Uh, if you saw in back of me, I have a mess there. So a lot of that's documentation from my book, including five boxes of this lawsuit where tens of thousands of people signed on to it. Unfortunately, the Corps of Engineers got their way and we have paid hundreds of millions of dollars to redo walls. We've lost some many of our sandy coves. The high rise, her, that were put down on Orchard Street, Pescadero. They're so close to the cliffs now and they were built so close and they've cost us a ton of money. They've put giant granite boulders on the beach to protect them that we lost one of our beautiful sandy coves down there. And this was kind of the going thing. Uh, the originators of the height limit, uh, I think it was around seven school teachers uh, um, from PB. They got together with other communities and put this through. Alex was the husband of one of those teachers. This wasn't something that happened in months. This was something that happened over an eight year period, roughly, maybe even longer than that. But Alex talks about it. it was, for three years, they were working on this plan. It wasn't arbitrary and Midway was supposed to be part of it. And like I say, Mignon over the years, who was one of the main people in the group, she went to the North Bay PAC. She went to North Bay Redevelopment. Uh, she went to the, um, the Sports Arena Ad Hoc Committee when they were trying to take it out last time in roughly 2003, 2004. She sat on the Peninsula Planning Board in her 80s. She always talked about it. It's documented in the records. The other thing is Naval Training Center. When they did the height limit there, there was a lawsuit against it. In the lawsuit, uh, five of the originators, including the chair who you've seen here, Alex, signed on the amicus brief saying that the 30 foot height limit was to apply for Naval Training Center, everything west of five and north of Laurel Street. And I was sitting next to Mignon during the judgment as it came in. And he had the nerve to sit there and say, we don't know if they meant to include NTC. And poor Mignon, she was ready to get up out of her seat and strangle the judge. I told her it wouldn't be a good idea. <laughs> you know, she was livid. And um, so the judge either did not read the briefs and, or the paperwork or he sold out. There's, there's only two ways that could go because it was in the paperwork. They did have a press conference on this at, that met at NTC and it was to be included just as Sports Arena is supposed to be included. It's in the documentation that these people meant to include it. So people not 
they're wrong. And these people were very hard on this. Anyhow, back to the history here. They they got thousands of signatures. One of the school teachers, she took off work for three years to work on this. Five of these people ended up in divorce because it caused so much pressure on their marriage, including Alex. He lost his wife over this issue. This isn't something that was snap and not thought of. These people give their lives to this issue and they have fought for this issue up to the day that many of them have died. And they've passed on this information to me and others. And like I say, it comes up over and over again. Um, and, and Mignon, she was mo one of the most amazing women I'd ever met. She, she, she became a therapist in her older age. She went back to school. Like I say, a Rosie the Riveter, a teacher on the Sierra Club, an environmentalist. <laughs> it just goes on and on. So to sit there and say, these people didn't know what they were doing. They were educated, bright. They were, they were Democrats, most of them. And they were early environmentalists and they did their homework. And it's just obscene to me that we have to keep fighting this fight over and over again. Um, so anyhow, in 1972, the initiative won. It was an initiative that was, they went out for signatures. They didn't just pass it in council. And I don't understand how the council can, without signatures, just put this on the ballot. And like I say, uh, there's a lot of untruths about it. And they did not put MCRD is included on this. That's the start of a BRAC process. It's a start of you know, uh, <laughs> it, yeah, put it, saying that they could have high buildings there is swaying the process. And it, they, uh, you know, I was part of Save Our NTC at the time, and there were so many bait and switches, but even the paperwork on the original process there was far better than what was here. But a lot of people know that that was a, a scam, a lot of that deal. And like I say, it was bait and switch. And it, you know, in one council meeting, they let McMillan off the hook for over a hundred million dollars worth of things that he was supposed to do on that base that he didn't, including restoring the historical buildings, roads, paying for the park. They got to shovel dirt and look like they did the park, but they got off for the 14 and a half million dollars that they were supposed to pay. Re redevelopment money was supposed to come back. And that's the problem. And I do not want to see MCRD and its historical buildings and its beautiful trees. It sits partly on tidelands to have this done. We also found out at the Bay to Bay meetings that there are toxins on part of the NTC land. There is a water table underneath. The state just almost passed a thing that they have to disclose this and the governor didn't sign it and said they're gonna wait five years. Well, we have liquefaction. We, there, you go six feet down there and there's water. In fact, when they were doing the redevelopment, one of the printers on the alley of Kurt Street said they went three feet down to redo a toilet and they hit water. The, you know, this, this was part of the San Diego River. It was part of False Bay. The history shows that, the, you know, they can't build these high rises and have it for low income. It will be too expensive. There are also is out a report. Uh, go ahead and uh, you can move to the next one. Oh, this is some of the protests. And as you see here, save our cliffs and our views. This goes back to, they had these protests during the 60s and 70s. And I think this is right on Orchard Street. This is in my book um, that people were well aware and they put this through. Um, yeah, Golding and Mark Steele tried to push this and, and they changed zoning laws that were illegal on some of this early. Uh, Back in 2003, the sports arena plan was ha happening again. And North Bay redevelopment uh, was threatening them in a domain with local properties. A lot of the property owners became worried. Some of the property owners now are very upset because if uh, Prop 15 goes through and high rises are allowed to go through and they can reassess every three years, these people aren't gonna be able to hold on to their properties. Um, when Sports Arena and Midway areas started, it was started because Point Loma and Ocean Beach didn't want to have 
in restaurants. They didn't want to have certain things. Their commander, retired friend of mine told me that the reason the strip clubs are there because they didn't want the military men to go down to Tijuana. They wanted to keep them here. That's how it got here. It's, people say it, was, it wasn't pre-planned. That part was. We used to have the movie theaters. We had a lot of entertainment down there. And um, you need a place where for warehouses and car places and things. Do we really want to drive up to Kearney Mesa or somewhere way far away to get our car fixed? You need some of this type of thing. Um, tar Target and the stores down there, they bring in a lot of sales tax. There's a lot of people who make their living off the sports arena as um, Colby Swap Meet. You know, those people are going to be out of business. I worked for Dixie Line Lumber for several years. I worked for the sports arena's head cocktail waitress and I did the dressing rooms there for five years while I was putting myself through college. That sports arena is really well built. It could be refurbed. That parking lot right now, they should be having outdoor concerts and people in cars. They should be having movies. Those staircases are set up perfect for it. It would be a lot better place to have homeless than downtown because the way it's set up and you, you could have outdoor events and have the snack bars delivered to your cars. There's so much that could be done that's not being done because the developers, all they can think of is developing this. If the height limit goes through, we fought before because they were gonna take out the orchard senior housing. Once that height limit's gone, those people, odds are, are gonna be gone. They took out the stone wood. We stopped them, but 10 years later, they took it out and it's market rate housing. I had an autistic, I taught, developmentally disabled for 22 years and he lived there and he was he was pushed out. These people, they didn't find new homes for him. His parents, he was in his fifties, had to go out in their senior years and fight and fight. They finally got him into the orchard senior housing. I don't wanna see him booted out of there. Uh, Bernard School was part of the North Bay redevelopment plan and they were talking about making it a park and keeping the schools at one point. Instead, it became uh, what they called uh, resort condos. You know, nothing from the redevelopment funds, they went to two other redevelopment agencies. If you're gonna complain about Midway looking the way it looks, your father, Kathy, she was on, he was on that pack. Why did they send the money to other redevelopment areas and not put it into making it look better? This, it was wrong and it was abusive to a lot of the people there and the threat of eminent domain. I, uh, the Kehoe people, I actually spoke for them. When downtown, when they were taking the Cuban cigar shop, I was on the news here in San Diego talking with them. And I don't wanna see eminent domain come back because they wanna put high rises. There's not low income housing here. It's gonna to be too expensive, especially on that water table. You may have 20% of the bottom floor being low and medium income and medium income is 109,000 according to the city website. Most of my friends aren't even making that. Yes, we need low income housing, but this is not gonna be that. Is downtown like that? No, and in fact, lots of things were canceled that were supposed to be low-income housing downtown. I was there when Zuquette had come into office. They waited till 5.30 after the press had gone to close the SROs. And the one that they first closed, the Marion, they, they had 650 people in there that became homeless when they did that. It was obscene. And you know, they closed over a dozen hotels and in that room were the hoteliers just lapping this up that they would be able to build and that they were able to kick these people out at that point. I was there with Mel Shapiro. He had asked me to stay and see this. And handicapped people, seniors, they were all coming in. I do not want to see that happen to the Orchard Senior Housing. One of our board members lives there for the Ocean Beach Historical Board. It, we got to really look at this. It's important. Um, and it, this is, uh, like I say, it's a lot to communicate over a short amount of time. Um, anyhow, 
thing to com combat this and get the word out to the public was that we formed the um, San Diego Coastal Alliance. We were down at council and there were um, things going through a lot of public land grabs and 30 foot height limit issues. We met people from La Jolla, we met people from PB. We formed a group and we looked at the records of the council people put that up. And, um, it, uh, and at the time, Mark Steele headed up the planning commission. And if you look at CIHAS in La Jolla, they, they do the fudge factor on these different buildings to break the 30 foot. They made it all one lot, several blocks, took out alleys and they measured from the top and then the bottom, they've broken the height limit. And he was the planning commissioner. They have been doing all kinds of things over the years. Right now, Point Loma High, on the website, it says three stories high. In the paper, it says three stories high. It's closer to six stories. And it doesn't go by stories, it's feet. And the whole idea of the people that started the 30 foot height limit was to have three stories and a little roof line, not to have three stories that are 20 feet high and some extra stories and some staircases and decks that go above it. They thought this through. It was three stories and a little roof line. This is 2007. The same plan basically that they're doing now, minus MCRD, they were trying to do back then. They tried to do it under Murphy. They tried to do it under Sanders. And as far as Faulkner, when I was running against him at a forum over in PB, he sat next to me and they asked, what is one of the most important things about keeping our beach community, beach communities? He looked over at the paper where I had written 30 feet and he says 30 feet. So I am gonna hold him to that. <laughs> he, he, here he is breaking that. But of course he stole it off my paper and I said 30 feet, but I gave some background of what the 30 foot's really about and why it's so important. And um, you know, our Ocean Beach Historical Group, we have a cottage plan here and people love the cottages and we're over density because we do have small homes and a lot of people are happy with them. People are restoring the cottages down here. They're beautiful. And um, the high rises are gonna be expensive. They're not, they're not gonna be low income. And we already have low income there that shouldn't be taken out. And I think it's real important. Um, go ahead, yeah, okay. This was 2007. This is a bunch of different activists from all over town. Uh, in the center is Mignon Shear and Alex. And uh, this was another time they were trying to break the 30 foot height limit and they were trying to fast track it at that point too. And behind them, you see, wait, wait, go back for a sec. Behind them, you see one of the uh, buildings in Ocean Beach and to the right is another one. The one to the right actually sits on a pipe that's 12 feet round and it, uh, from a couple of people, I've been told that it's falling apart and this giant building sits on top of it. The last time we had to spend public money on it was because it was caving under it. This sits on top of sandstone. Read my book about sandstone and how it breaks away. But anyhow, there was a cave underneath. The homeless were living under this building in a cave and the OB reg brought it up and uh, we paid money once again to fill this in and put a wall up for umpteenth time to save this building that uh, they built too close to the cliff, they fast-tracked this. When the 30-foot height limit, it won, but it also went through the courts for four years. And during that four years, a lot of builders fast-tracked things, including uh, Pete Wilson and Reagan, some of their buddies on this and other developers um, at our meeting, uh, someone spoke about two of the buildings having a view corridor. It was six inches between the two buildings. It was so obscene. The other thing, when this group was putting through the 30 foot height limit, they were also putting through the Coastal Commission. They were collecting signatures for both. Our coast would not be as beautiful without them and the 30 foot height limit. And it, that's why it's very important. And keeping CEQA alive, which is the California quality Environmental Act, it's important. San Diego, this 
Um, this was a study recently of flood prone areas and sports arena, if you've been down there during floods at certain times, it, you know, it floods very badly and they have pumps and sometimes the pumps have broke in the past and that area is flooded, streets have fallen through, they've had all kinds of problems. This shows the floodplain. It goes under MCRD, it goes under the sports arena, it goes clear over to Old Town area. And they said by 2050 that this area will, parts of it may be underwater with global warming. That's not that far away. By the time these buildings are built, it's not that far away. There's also toxic problems. There's also an earthquake fault. That's partly why this transit thing wasn't built on MCRD years ago when it passed council, because it was supposed to go on that property. Because right along on the far side of the airport there towards five, there's an earthquake fault. It's the same fault that links to Navy Broadway. It's the same fault that did a 4.5 at the time Navy Broadway was being voted on. It, the, you know, the city, if they're gonna pass this stuff, they need to be responsible for this stuff. San Francisco had a lot of liquefaction, buildings fell down. That's what can happen here. And it's really not a good place to go high rise. Trojan horse, that's what this is. It's a public giveaway of public land. We can do better with our public land. This is one of the last big pieces of land we have. Uh, Dixie Line Lumber has been there for years having to relocate. It's really sad at this point because a lot of developers, a lot of people use them. Um, like I say, the swap meet, uh, MCRD, the, it's not on the ballot. I think this is so illegal that they did this because putting that in with it, you know, that's a base closure. That's a whole different thing and, and a whole different, uh, you know, throwing the 30 foot height limit into that and um, to bust it is just wrong. And it, all this, how this process has gone through and been fast tracked with our public land and um, anyhow, let me look at my notes here for a second. Like I say, it's a lot to cover in 10 or 15 minutes. Um, I think um, it, it is, it is a lot to cover. Uh, yeah. We can send but, like I say, if you've been on MCRD, there's some beautiful historic buildings. There's one big long one. When the military guys go there, they line up under this beautiful arch building and there that's, their start to MCRD. They have footprints on the pavement there. I used to go to the military brass breakfast with my commander friend and um, beautiful museum there. And I hate to see them leave or be forced out because of what's going on with our city and not allow the public to know what's really going on there. Okay, I'm good. If anybody has questions, I can probably Thank answer. Thank you so much. I'm sure there will be a lot. Um, but we <laughs> want to make sure that some of the other uh, speakers can can talk, yeah. can talk to you um, so we don't get time constrained and can have some questions. Um, so uh, Dr. Jin and the other Kathy, you guys are up next. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, my fellow members of the Point Loma OB Dem Club. Good to be with you. Um, I want to thank Kathleen for her comments. Uh, the understanding the history of something is very, very important. And I, I want to say that I uh, totally agree with the 30 foot height limit in areas in which uh, we are on the water. So when we are on the beach or uh, on Mission Bay or at the ocean, we should keep the 30 foot height limit. And uh, I'm, I'm really glad we have it because I think it makes San Diego, San Diego. When you come along the five and you, you can see the ocean, you can see the bay, you can see the water, the, pine, the palm trees, the other trees, um, the landscaping, it's all very important. It's all very San Diego. We do not want to be Los Angeles. We do not want to be New York. So let me say that I'm, I'm definitely on your side with that. But let's talk a little bit about the truth about the Midway uh, Pacific Highway planning area, which is probably the smallest planning area in the entire city. Let me uh, tell you that it is a total of only 1,324 acres. And of this, the Marine Corps Recruit Depot that Kathleen mentioned, and it is a beautiful spot, well kept by the Marines, and it covers 388 acres. That's a lot of land it covers. 
It is federal property and therefore it does not come under city laws, nor does it come under state laws. It is completely controlled by the federal government and happily they have kept it within the 30 foot height limit and have kept it up beautifully. So that leaves 936 acres remaining. Of those 936 acres, only 88 are owned by the city. Of the 88 that the city owns, they lease 48 acres to the sports arena and surrounding area. And they lease 40 acres to senior subsidized housing, which we have absolutely no plans ever to take away. So the orchard will stay. Do not be fearful of that. That will not be taken away. And that is leased by the city to the people who run the orchard for the elderly. And it's a beautiful area as many of you have visited it. You probably know it has beautiful apartments and landscaping. So um, uh, that leaves after you take those uh, 88 acres, the city owns and leases away, you're left with 850 acres. That 858 acres is privately owned by different people, different entities. The committee, uh, the planning group for the Midway area came to us at city council and asked us to please help them. They said, we cannot um, enhance our area of the city unless we get rid of the height limit. And if we do get rid of the height limit, they wanted to go back to the basic zoning that was already in place for that, those uh, 800 and some acres. And what that zoning is, it limits it from between 30 to 100 feet. So you will not have skyscrapers there, the very highest, and it's all by parcel. So very, some of the parcels are up to 100 feet, but most of them are not. And it's between 40, 30 to 40 to 100 feet. So um, I don't want you to worry that you're gonna get skyscrapers. I've heard people say, oh, we don't need another downtown, blah, blah, blah. It's not gonna be like that. It cannot go above 100 feet when it goes back to the underlying zoning. So I want you to rest assured of that. Now, why, why, would the, why would we wanna take this out of the 30 foot limit? Well, it only was included because it happens to be west of the five. And as you know, the five is the dividing line for the coastal uh, limit that was passed in 1972 by the voters. And so the voters again would have to change that. And so that's why the city council put it on the ballot. So if you vote for this, what you're doing is you're taking away the 35, 30 foot height limit from an 888 acre area that does not have ocean views, bay views. It, it is not on the bay. water. It is not on the beach. And it is, it is an area that is blighted. It is an area with strip clubs and bars. It is an area with a traffic mess. It is the entranceway to Point Loma. And it is actually a diamond in the rough. It, it can become a beautiful part of San Diego and a beautiful entryway to Point Loma from uh, this part from north, from the north of the city. So I, I hope that uh, you will take all that into account. Those are the facts. It was only included because it happens to be a small piece of acreage that's located west of the five. This measure has nothing to do with the rest of the coastal zone. This plan, uh, comes from the Midway Planning Group. The Midway Planning Group uh, plan was passed in 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 2018. The, the uh, Planning Commission approved of it, 2018. The City Council approved of it and the Coastal Commission approved of it. This, this measure is backed by a broad coalition. First time ever that I know of that both the Democratic and Republican parties of San Diego County have agreed to yes on Measure E. And the other thing to consider is the Climate Action Campaign, which is totally behind this. All the bicycle groups are behind this and everybody is in support of it and both sides. So I, I don't want you to, to be swayed by fearfulness. This is not something that's gonna lead to the takeover of other coastal areas. And, and uh, so I just, I wanted to make sure that you guys know that. All right, so I want to introduce to you, Kathy Kenton, who is the chair of the Midway Pacific Planning Group. 
and she is also a business owner in the Midway area, been there with her family for many, many, many decades, and uh, is a, the chair of the campaign for Measure E. And uh, Kathy, if you have a few words you'd like to throw in there with this, I, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I just, let me just mention one more thing, and that is the current sports arena is only 77 feet high. Now, when you look at it, you don't think of it as a really big, high, tall building. Well, it is 77 feet high because it was built in the 1960s before the law was passed in 1972 and approved by the state Supreme Court in 1976. So uh, that's why it, it was built that high. So if we, if we pass this measure, we can have a new sports arena that is somewhere under 100 feet. You can't go beyond that. I'm not sure how that particular parcel is zoned, but it will not be terribly high. And uh, no, nor will anything else built in that area. So I hope that you will change your minds and be willing to take a chance to polish up this beautiful diamond in the rough and make Midway a beautiful part of San Diego. And now I'd like to have uh, Kathy Kenton step, step in. That's thank okay. You. Thank you, Council Member Campbell. Um, I, and thank you for having me here today. Um, I, I want to echo some of the, um, the comments of Council Member Campbell. And I'd like to start um, with a position that I've always held which is that, that and, and stated publicly, that um, the inclusion of Midway in, um, in the original Prop D was an arbitrary inclusion because of our location west of the five. And that was actually confirmed just in the last two weeks by Mr. Leondis, um, one of the original uh, uh, organizers of Prop D, who when reached by email by a UT um, reporter stated, and I quote, the Interstate 5 boundary was an arbitrary decision because if you wanted to write the whole new proposed boundary in a proposition, most voters would not take the time to understand it and would not sign it. It had to be simple so that the voters could understand it and sign the petition, close quote. So as you can tell from that, it, it, it was not, Midway was not included because we were part of the coastal area or the coastal zone that the, the organizers were trying to protect. We were simply a part of the area that made it con a, a convenient boundary. And I, I do wanna say that I, while I don't currently live in the community, I was raised in Point Loma I went, to, I graduated from Point Loma High School. I have family in the coastal area. We have four generations working in, um, I'm sorry, three generations working in Midway. We have owned property in Midway for over 60 years. And it, it's an area that's very near and dear to my heart. My husband and I are planning to sell our home and move back to Point Loma in the near future. So. We don't want to see the height limit diminished for the coastal zone. The fact is Midway is not a coastal community. Midway is a landlocked community. MCRD was included by the city of San Diego in the boundary um, during the update process. That was not something that we did. No one is after MCRD. No one, I, I can assure you that the community does not want, nor are we planning to build skyscrapers. That, that's simply false. It's, um, it's misinformation. There is the approximately 15% of the acreage that is, create, that is part of Midway is currently zoned at a maximum of 100 feet, the other 85% of Midway is zoned for under 100 feet, of typically 65 feet or less. So we are absolutely not talking about sky skyscrapers. We are absolutely not talking about, about luxury condominiums that is not in the plan. If you look at the plan that was approved, it's 
affordable and moderate income housing. It's the goal here is to build a community where you can work, live, play and shop and where people who do not live in the community can come and enjoy the amenities that Midway has to offer. Um, the, the council member is correct. As soon as this passed, uh, as soon as our update was approved, we started working on the 30 foot height limit. People ask why now? It's our first election cycle. This is our first opportunity. But please, please understand we are not, this is not a slippery slope. We are not coming after the coastal communities. No one is coming after the coastal communities. And we all, we all support maintaining the height limit for our beautiful coastline. Thank you. Uh, can I rebut a little bit of that? Um, at the CPC meeting, they were talking about single family neighborhoods in Point Loma and different areas breaking the height limit. It was, it's, it was the CPC, for those that don't know, is the Community Planning Board Committee where they have a person from each person. Sadly, Point Loma didn't have a representative there. The Ocean Beach person did not represent the group or a lot of OB and she was pushing to break the 30 foot height limit in coastal communities. And Midway, you know, was there talking on this. Now the Midway plan was for the 30 foot height limit. It wasn't for above it. And a hundred feet is still pretty dang high when you look at that sports arena that's below that. And that is city owned land. And I think a lot of us, one of the, the opponents is talking about parkland there and different things. You know, Balboa Park brings a lot of people there. As far as the views, MCRD, which is now part of this plan, is on the bay. You have the San Diego River, which is one of the top bird uh, sanctuaries in California now. And SeaWorld will even attest to that. So you are surrounded by water. Saying there's no water surrounding this is wrong. So all these apply. And like I say, it, a lot of it's uh, tidelands, floodplains. It, it's, it's a real, it was water. It was part of False Bay. Part, you know, Mission Bay was later dredged and uh, where Rob Field was, was water at one point. So, this is wrong and the, the history says different on this. And- um, I, I'm sorry, it, I just wanted it, to break uh, in really quick to make sure we yeah. have enough time um, for uh, audience questions and also to let Mandy speak, which I think that Kathy, she was gonna say a little bit kind oh, okay. of yeah, no problem. what you were gonna say too. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so uh, next, next up, um, uh, we have uh, Mandy, who um, I asked her to speak at this this meeting as a as a club member as well, because I got a lot of feedback about the value of her comments about this measure at our last meeting. Um, so, um, Mandy, if you wanted to um, go ahead and you can either respond or whatever it was that you had prepared, and then um, we'll uh, take questions for uh, for every for all the speakers um, after. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, again, I am here as a, a member. Uh, I am a member of the Peninsula Community Planning Board, but the following statements are all my own thoughts and opinions. And the board has not taken an official position. And um, I do not re represent the board as a whole. So I just want to let everyone know that I'm here. These are my thoughts and opinions. Um, good afternoon, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak at today's meeting. I am a proud military spouse and a mother of two young children who attend Ocean Beach Elementary School. My husband is a senior officer in the United States Navy and a combat veteran who was medically discharged from the Navy one year ago after 27 years of service. I am a concerned parent and I am passionate about ensuring that our streets and neighborhoods are family friendly and safe for children throughout the peninsula, not just today, but for decades to come. I first became passionate with politics when I began volunteering as the Ocean Beach Elementary School Garden Coordinator. I worked with parent volunteers and school staff to teach children about gardening and help them grow organic produce that is harvested and sampled by the school children in the classroom and also in the school cafeteria. 
It was from the garden that I started witnessing traffic safety issues around the parameter of the school and began to advocate for traffic safety mitigations for the school families. And in 2019, I ran and was elected to the Peninsula Community Planning Board along with several community-minded individuals. I am grateful for this opportunity and I believe it is such a privilege to serve this community here. I am against Measure E because it erodes away the protections of Prop D that have protected our beaches and coastal communities from overdevelopment for the past 48 years. It will impede beach and coastal access to the majority of San Diegans and it does not address essential infrastructure obligations that the Midway Pacific Highway community and surrounding coastal communities desperately need and is unnecessary in the redevelopment of the Midway Pacific Highway community. Measure E is the start of a slippery slope that will erode the protections that Prop D, also known as the 30 foot roll, that has protected our beaches and coastal communities from overdevelopment for over 48 years. To fully understand why I am against the measure, I need for you to understand where and why the 30 foot rule came into existence. On December 7th, 1972, a voter initiative known as Proposition D established a 30 foot maximum structure height limit in coastal areas of the city of San Diego, known as the coastal height limit overlay zone. The passage of Prop D was a rebuke to unchecked development and densification of our coastal communities that was inhibiting public coastal views and it was restrict restricting San Diego's access to public beach and coastal communities. With the motto of It's Our Beaches Too, two small community activist groups named Beach Action Group and voters organized to think environmentally successfully put Prop D on the ballot and it was approved in a citywide vote with 64% of San Diegans voting yes. Prop D was declared constitutional by the California Supreme Court in 1976 and the US Supreme Court refused to hear the case and in effect allowed the proposition to stand. Why 30 feet? Community activists in 1972 that put Prop D on the ballot wanted to keep the idea of a height limit simple. Research done in 1970 and 1971 found that 80% of San Diego at the time had a self-imposed 30 foot height limit with only about 4% of communities having buildings that were greater than 40 feet, which is why they decided to choose 30 feet. The effect of Prop D has been to protect our beaches and coastal communities to not only survive, but thrive in the past 48 years. Proposition D continues to allow all San Diegans access to our beaches and coastal communities while allowing for a harmonious relationship between needed development and beach access. Measure E is a direct threat to the protections and the prosperity that Proposition D has brought to all San Diegans. Measure E would impact the entire 1,324 acres of the Midway Pacific Highway Community Plan area, allowing for high rises up to 150 feet to be built throughout the zone, except for 66 acres as outlined in Measure E. Now, please note that 88 acres of the Midway Pacific Highway Community Plan area is owned by the city of San Diego, including the current sports arena site. Measure E will allow for unchecked development and densification west of I-5 and at the critical I-5 and I-8 hub that is a crucial artery for all San Diego's to access our beaches. Residents leaving the peninsula and as well military service members and civilian employees traveling to and from work on the coast. Measure E will essentially allow for a wall of development west of I-5 that will impede and dramatically increase transit times to and from our coastal communities and beaches. By adding over 28,000 residents to an area that is already experiencing heavy traffic delays and problems to and from the coastal region at a crucial intersection hub where the I-8 and the I-5 intersect, this development will further keep, delay, and discourage 
San Diegans from access to the coastal areas with, as of today, no plan has been provided by the city of San Diego to address the current heavy traffic issues. In previous city of San Diego traffic counts at the intersection of West Point Loma Boulevard and Sports Arena Boulevard and Midway Drive, over 80,000 cars a day travel through the intersection with again, no plan from the city of San Diego to address high traffic throughputs to and from the coastal region and beaches. There are no hospitals on the peninsula. Current proposed development, which will further impede traffic on and off the peninsula, will increase already long response times of ambulatory services to reach San Diegans in need of emergency service on the peninsula. The city of San Diego has no plan, nor has the city offered any guarantees that if Measure E passes, the city will provide impacted communities with much needed infrastructure, installations, and upgrades. Currently, the Midway Pacific Highway community area is already experiencing critical infrastructure shortfalls, such as street maintenance, drainage issues, and flooding that the city is currently not yet addressing. The main point is that Measure E will do nothing to help with current or future blatant infrastructure shortfalls in the Midway Pacific Highway community area. And from the city of San Diego's financial impact study of Measure E, this is from the city of San Diego. Although an increase in allowable building height may spur additional development and economic activity, the potential impact to the city's general fund cannot be determined at this time. The net fiscal impact to the general fund will be dependent on the type and mix of land uses, as well as long-term market demand for these uses. Typically, residential uses require higher municipal service expenditures than revenue generating non-residential uses, such as retail and hotel. The general fund is the fund that the city pays for municipal services. So based on the city's own analysis, typically residential uses require higher municipal services. The analysis provides no details on how the city would pay or finance needed infrastructure and municipal services, Midway Pacific Highway community area and the surrounding coastal communities that will be impacted by Measure E. The city likes to use the term may a lot in their analysis, which is code speak for may or may not. Measure E is another city giveaway to a developer that is unnecessary and unneeded. Measure E is unnecessary for development of the Midway Pacific Highway community. In a competing proposal to the city, the Toll Brothers housing proposal was able to achieve the same number of residents without breaking the 30 foot height limit rule. And additionally, their proposal included a soccer stadium and twice as much parkland that did not require the 30 foot rule to be broken. The selection process was used by the mayor and it was flawed and it resulted in both proposals achieving almost identical scores, meaning that revitalization of the Midway Pacific Highway community area could have been achieved without breaking the 30 foot height rule. Instead, the mayor with support from the city council and our council member, instead they chose a path that is the first step in giving our business, our coastal communities and surrounding areas to developers. Finally, I am questioning the ethics of our council member, the city council, and in general, the mayor that during a pandemic, when most San Diegos are just trying to survive and are unable or are distracted so that they cannot participate in the political process, they chose to push a major development west of I-5 at the critical transportation hub at the I-5 and I-8 intersection. You continue to allow Airbnb to thrive illegally in our community and Wait, wait a second, it's not done yet. Do you know that on November 9th, they are going to be pushing complete communities in, con in possible conjunction with Measure E, which will allow for essentially unlimited and unchecked development of the Midway Pacific Highway community, the surrounding coastal communities and beaches. And with an outgoing mayor, 
and five of the nine city council seats up for election in the coming weeks, why would the mayor and the city council in particular be pushing so hard for developer friendly policies? I really ask that you educate yourself on this matter and vote against Measure E. Thank you for your time. Thanks. All right. So I'm assuming we're going to have like lots of questions. Um, and uh, I kind of want to keep the questions more to like factual stuff because I know that um, we have a lot of um, different uh, knowledge base in terms of people that were able to speak. Um, so uh, just kind of questions about facts and because um, I know a lot of people have really strong opinions. Uh, so um, if you have a question, you can go ahead and raise your hand and um, we can kind of continue discussion from there. Well, Mara, can you see the raised hands? Uh, I, oh, sorry, I, I had made you the co-host. You know what, John, can I put you in charge of, of unmuting the people to ask questions? Yeah, yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll just call on them and yeah. Okay, okay so, cool, yeah. perfect, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. So Suzanne, you're up first, Suzanne Finch. Okay, I have, my first question is for Kathy Kenton. Uh, Kathy, you said that you do not at this time live in Point Loma or the Midway District. Oh, Suzanne, can I stop you for just a second? Sure. Kathy Kenton, she chatted um, earlier that she um, oh, she's had to left. log off. Um, so if, if the question is applicable to, so if anybody else can answer it, then you can go ahead and still ask. Uh, so I guess my question to her would have been, wouldn't Prop E then increase her property value? I mean, of course she would be for that, it would seem, if it was going to increase her property value. That was my question, uh, going to be my question to her. But thank you for letting me know that, Marin. Um, secondly, my next question is for Jen Campbell, and is Jen still on the line? Okay, so Dr. Campbell, uh, if Prop E were to be, were to win and uh, people, more people voted yes, would there be any guarantee that housing built on the former sports arena site would have at least one parking space per unit? Because not only do we have a serious traffic problem in Ocean Beach and Point Loma and just getting here, uh, it seems to me that we also have some parking issues. I mean, literally, if there's a big concert, there's people parking on my street and I'm four blocks away. Do we have any kind of guarantee that folks that would be living in what used to be the former sports arena area would have guaranteed parking spaces? Thank you. Uh, thank you for that question. And uh, before I start, I want, I want to say um, that I am the only council member who voted against changing the parking. The parking laws before were that there had to be so many spaces per living quarter. And the city council almost unanimously voted that out. I, I was the sole voice that said, that's crazy. Until you have enough mass transit and enough ability to use alternative forms of transport, you cannot deny people parking spaces. This is Southern California. We need our cars. And so I was the only lone voice that, that stood up for us. I think everyone in District 2 agrees with you, and I certainly agree with you. But, as far but, as uh, the details of what will be built. But that being said, will there be one space per unit? I have no idea because the city council has now passed this new rule the builders will have to consider what the marketplace wants and they will have to get their plans approved by the city. So that depends on the future. It has nothing to do with Measure E. Nothing to do with Measure E. And I, you know, I, I, I just wanna say that the lady who questioned my honesty, uh, I am hurt by that. That was, that was totally uncalled for. Everyone in this city, Mandy, Everyone in this city and on our city council cares about our city and making our city a better place. We may disagree on some issues, which is just fine, but we do not question each other's honesty. And I will take my leave of this meeting now. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, sorry, just say up next then, Maren, we have uh, Tommy, Tommy Howe. Okay. Okay, did we have any other questions? I think that, um, 
It, okay, that was kind uh, of a Can I, I make a comment on one thing? Um, they said they, that MCRD, they actually had on television that it may, may be up for the BRAC and they may be moving. Uh, uh, That's true. Uh, it, it's not a question. So they left the meeting? Yeah. And wow. um, if they do that, it, oh, I'm sorry. I, what I said was on television on one of the news channels the other day, they talked about moving the Marines and it's, in, it, it's a possible BRAC action. The BRAC is what decides what bases will close or not. And um, this is to their other base back east. It's not even to uh, Pendleton or anything. So it, it's not pie in the sky that the Marines are gonna stay there. And if the height limit is put there, it's gonna make that property that much valuable, more valuable to developers. So um, there, there's a reason it was put in there on that property. And it is on the Bay and it is on tidelands and they're specific to tidelands that are important too to know, you know, about housing and different things. Um, can you, Kathy, can you say that again? I didn't catch all of, all of what you were okay. saying. Okay, um, on television, they talked that the BRAC is actually talking about moving the Marines out of MCRD. It's not pie in the sky, like they were trying to say that. So if they do that, and if this vote goes through raising the height limit, it makes that property that much more valuable to developers as a giveaway. I, I went through all the NTC stuff yeah, yeah. before and um, there's some beautiful historic buildings there and trees. If anything, it should be a park or a university, something for the public, not for developers to put up. I, I don't know, I still call 100 or 170 feet a high rise or you know, 10 stories, it, that's, tall around here and um and i would like to clarify um they're saying it's only 100 feet but per the 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 written measure e if you look at the measure e they say it can go up to 150 feet it says it in the actual measure so i just encourage people to again realize how how high we're, we're looking at and, and why one one thing at first they started out at 70 feet, then they were talking 100 feet, and there was one doc, one thing that said 27 stories high. So there's nothing on the measure that has a formal height limit stop point. So what they're saying is wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's, the, the, the measure is so badly written and so much left out. Like I said, if you're leaving out MCRD, if you're leaving out the height limit, uh, if you're not telling people that the master plan was for 30 foot, it, the, it, I, I don't see how the city attorney could have approved this to be on the ballot. And yet they had clean elections, which people have been working on for 40 years, and that didn't make the ballot. It, it just it, something that actually may help the city a lot. But the, and this was fast tracked. When I went to the CPC meeting, they didn't say that if you changed from your computer or to a phone, you couldn't log on. I couldn't log on to that meeting. Lots of people were getting cut off. They've also eliminated the Brown Act in their meeting, which is one of our protections. Mm -hmm. Also, they, they, uh, the city attorney and Todd Gloria worked on not having to provide certain public documents. Now, Donna Fry is suing on public documents. This is a mess and it's the Democrats and the Republicans. And as a democratic group, you know, I hope you guys are listening because we need to reel these people in and, and the clean elections would help keep the big money, the developers, the good old boys. In this, in this initiative too, Cushman, all these developers are putting tens of thousands of dollars into it. The few people that are fighting this are putting, I know one person that's putting their retirement into opposing this. You know, it's people like me, and I don't want to every three to five years get back drawn into this. I would like to relax and keep writing my books, but I put this into my books a little bit on Ocean Beach and Point Loma because we keep getting attacked by this and I'm trying to teach the people the history. 
And unfortunately, the millennials have no idea what this history is. And it's important for the older people here and the generations to teach people about this and why Point Loma is lovely and why Ocean Beach is a neat place. And, you know, um, and how the fudge factor has happened, you know. Okay, let's do one more question. We have ago, a, uh, were John, can we go to the right of the questions? Anyhow. Yeah, so Tommy is next up. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, thank you, John. I appreciate it. It's uh, nice to see everyone. I can see I haven't had a haircut in a while. Um, now this this is a this is a good discussion. It's a shame that this discussion is happening so late in the process. M my question, I suppose, is for the proponents of of Measure E. Um, a lot of the 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 uh, this sort of um, fire under the frying pan uh, need for for this uh, apparently is because of a shortage of of housing. The real problem, of course, is that people can't afford down payments, not that there isn't actual housing stock available in the city. Just this past week, Three Roots, which is uh, 1,800 units, just was voted on by the city council. That's going to be built in my neighborhood here in Mira Mesa. We're going to have another project called Stone Creek going online in about uh, 10 years. So we're looking at about 5,200 units going online here. That's not people, that's units. Plus, you have all of the housing that's being built in Mission uh, Valley right now, uh, the Riverwalk and so on. Uh, and that is already on a transit line. You already have a functioning trolley there. So, you know, I, th I think that it's fine to go and build a, a, a housing uh, at the sports arena site, but why must we go through this, th this heartache of undoing the 30 foot height limit unless it's a way to enable that slippery slope so developers can truly get at Point Loma, NOB and PB? Why must we break the height limit in order to do housing in an effective way in this area? considering all the other housing that's that's going online here. That's the question. Did all the proponents, did all the, those four measure E jump off the call? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, so we're just that talking to ourselves. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, they didn't have time to stay. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, uh, my, my question stands, and, and I've asked this before, and I have not gotten a, a good response. Yeah. Um, another thing, I'd like to see a study right now of the people dying of COVID, the World War II generation, because I've had 10 friends that were in their 80s and 90s that have died in Point Loma and Ocean Beach and left homes here. And um, also uh, the illegal aliens that are being deported, that I would like to see the numbers there of homes, both rentals and for sale homes that are coming onto the market now. Because like I said, we have a lot of World War II vets here and their wives and families. And right now, you know, they're hitting 90 and uh, there's still a few alive, but they're going fast. And um, what is the number of houses that, that are becoming available with these? Because it's not, a, you know, we have so many people that have died of COVID and, and these seniors that are ending up in homes now that I think there's a, there's a big uncounted number. And then of course the Airbnbs. Here, we're, when they banned Airbnbs on my block and I'm on the south side of Ocean Beach, over half our block had parking for the first time. When these Airbnbs kicked back in, they're parking up into the next block. And, um, you know, I think the number of Airbnbs is much larger than they think because about every third house on my block and 10 years ago, we did not have that. And so these, the housing shortage is a big question of what's really happening. It's, it's, of, it's of course, it's, it, of course, it's all interrelated, right? And that's, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's what is the true number on available housing and, and housing that's in the works right now. Plus they just approved to have granny flats and the mini, uh, flats, uh, you know, uh, that could be quite a bit. So, but the uh, other thing they oh, just claim to quick, be doing uh, this, yeah. Uh, John, did we have any other questions in the in the waiting queue? No, there's no, uh, there's no other hands can, raised. Can I just, one, one quick thing with that. Yeah, the and then we have to wrap up because we got to do our report. environmental, but they're not talking about how important it is to have trees and grass and parks. And, uh, you know, and none of these buildings I'm hearing are, you know, going to be environmental buildings. It, um, you know, and, and how important it is to, uh, you know, keep the river and do these things. It, it just, uh, to me, 
and the developers that are supporting Prop E, it's, it, I don't see a lot at the Sierra Club and certain people supporting this. The Sierra Club backed away from these kind of developments a while back because some of their people, including one of their presidents, realized that it was more of a developer scam than it was an environmental thing. Yeah, to Tommy, uh, Maren, sorry, Tommy has that the hand chair, but talk Oh, about Tommy, go ahead. Um, and Tommy, could be our last one, okay? Because we got to get to our reports after this. On the river. Yeah, so uh, I, I will just make this short. Um, you know, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, we're, we're opposed to building housing. I think it's a good idea. We have good opportunities to do that. And there are places in the city where we can go beyond 30 feet and going up. And I think that as an environmentalist, I, I fully support that. Uh, it's better than sprawl housing. Well, let's consider where this is. Um, I mean, the Midway District was zoned as a, as a warehouse district for a reason. The sports arena was built there back in 65 for a reason, because it could literally be hosed out. One of the things that keeps the area from being soggy is that causeway that I-8 is on that separates the Midway District from the San Diego River. Two blocks away, you have the Famosa Slough that goes uh, beneath West Point Loma Boulevard. This is a conduit through which you're gonna have sea level rise of upwards of eight feet over the course of the next 80 years. Now that may not put the, the, the Midway site below sea level or below the water, but you may have a very soggy first floor. So uh, again, this is an area where you, you may not want to be uh, uh, looking at, at long-term development and maybe uh, keeping it zoned as a warehouse district may be the best use for it uh, over the next several decades. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and thanks to, um, to, our, to our remaining speakers um, for being here. I know that it can, uh, people's emotions can kind of run high on something uh, like this, like when you have a very strong opinion about something. Um, we just want to make sure that um, we're not going to go personal with, with any of it. We're all still, we're all still friends. It's all okay. You can disagree on things and disagree about the best method for, um, for change or for creating affordable housing or whatever else. Um, I think it's, uh, it's the disagreement is healthy because the goal of argument should not be to win. It should be progress. I think mm -hmm. some famous philosophers said that. Um, so um, thanks everyone. And we'll um, see into our reports. Um, I uh, have, have no reports, so um, we can go to the uh, kind of heftier reports um, with um, Angela, Kip, and if John has anything as well. I know that Angela and Kip definitely do. So shall I start? Sure. Okay. Um, so at this point, our account has $8,274 in it. Uh, we have not had um, as many expenditures this year as you can all imagine, since normally we had expenditures associated with each of our meetings. Um, and eventually, hopefully we will be back to being able to all meet together. Um, but for the moment, we unfortunately are not going to be meeting together and the executive board in the future will talk more about when uh, we will um, resume, which as at the moment we would be obviously quite many months away from now. Um, but at any rate, that has lessened the actual amount of expenditures that we've had. We have made some uh, donations this year and I think we will discuss further what we might do for the Western Service Workers Association, um, helping them out some more given the fact that um, we will no doubt not have our typical holiday party in which we do the toy drive um, and we'll be in further conversation with the Western Service Workers Association about what are their greatest needs this year. Um, I also just remind people that um, every year starting in November, November 1st, if you end up renewing your membership in the club, that will take you all the way through December 31st um, of 2021. Um, and we'll make a major drive to encourage people to become members again, uh, which as you know, we try to push folks to actually renew in December and January, but we'll talk more about that at our next meeting. Um, but at any time, you can always go online and renew your membership. Um, and at that note, I just, does anybody have any questions? If not, that ends my report. 
Hi, uh, this is Kip, secretary for the club uh, with the secretary's report. Uh, we had a great propositions uh, meeting last uh, month. Thank you for everyone who came. That was so informative. And um, we've published the minutes and I just wanna put them up here so we can get them passed. Um, again, these will be available on the uh, website and a lot of the uh, quotes from the meeting have actually gone on to the Instagram um, so if we could just get a motion to approve these minutes from our last propositions meeting, that would be appreciated. Motion to approve. Thank you. This is Angela, I second. Thank you. And uh, any opposing? All right, thank you very much. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, posting about and, and maybe getting some more information from uh, Kathleen because this was some really great history today. Um, thanks again. Thanks, thanks Kip. <laughs> um, by the way, guys, if you aren't following us on Instagram, um, please do because uh, Kip and I have been taking pictures of some of the good neighborhood election signs. Um, I was actually trying to figure out how to make my house be a combination Halloween decorations and also election related. <laughs> Um, if anybody has any excellent ideas on that front, I've got a couple days left. Um, so um, if you see awesome election signs in your uh, neighborhood on your street, um, let us know so that we can uh, spotlight that. Uh, or if there's anything else that you'd like us to feature in terms of initiatives that you volunteer for, uh, if you need volunteers, if you just want to generate interest for any specific um, local thing that you're trying to highlight, right? Um, I know that a couple of different local groups are still doing beach cleanups, um, still doing uh, all, all of that stuff um, going on. If you have um, a local business um, that you uh, would like us to, I don't know, um, if, you, if you have anything kind of for the club that you'd like us, that you'd like to talk to us about, please reach out to us also, because this is for you. That's kind of the whole idea is we wanna provide a service to everybody um, and help our community. Uh, so um, I think, John, did you have a report? Nope, nothing to report. Other, nope. other than something's happening on November the 3rd, but I think everybody knows about that. Oh, what's that again? What's that? What is that? Something, <laughs> something I can't, can't slip my mind, but something. Yeah. I know there's something on that day, right? <laughs> Maren, can I, this is, can I make a comment about that? Of course. Hi, hi everybody. Um, I, I, nice to see a bunch of familiar faces. Um, so I've been helping the Biden-Harris campaign. and We had a, a call today. We, one of the things the campaign has done is set up a voter hotline to answer voters' questions. A lot of confusion out there. Um, a lot of people don't have access to internet, uh, uh, computers, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, uh, they had planned a certain num number of slots to fill these uh, uh, the hotline. And we're getting the number of calls now in a day that we got uh, in all of like the 2018 cycle, for example, it's really crazy. So anyway, if there's anybody that's up for volunteering for that or poll monitoring as well, um, please reach out to me and I can connect you to get you connected. Thank you, that's all. Awesome, thank you. Yes, anything of that nature that anybody is involved in, please, um, please let me know. Uh, so uh, I think we're gonna actually end up ending uh, on time. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much for coming. Um, this is a kind of kind of a funny one, um, but a lot of uh, good information presented. We'll have uh, minutes. Uh, if you do want to reach out to any of the guests uh, or any of the campaigns, Tim Nader or Rob Howard that were um, that both spoke at the beginning of the meeting, um, we'll put those in the newsletter too. Um, so. Uh, Thanks, Mandy, for putting your email. Um, Kathy's book is forthcoming um, about the uh, history of Sunset Cliffs Natural Park. Uh, I really am selling them um, uh, myself. They gave me a few ahead of time uh, for $20, including um, tax. So it's a few dollars off. But I, I'd be happy to deliver to anybody on the peninsula if you want to get a hold of me. Yeah. Um, right. yeah. And, and also, please. Um, Right now, we're not having meetings at the Ocean Beach Historical, but we've put up some interesting movies you might enjoy. We have Walk About, Talk About with a fellow named Dean who meets us, uh, a lot of interesting people from Ocean Beach. Uh, he, he walked all over Point Loma and OB, and unfortunately, he just passed away a few months ago. 
but um, it's it's really an interesting um, piece, uh, and um, it's 53 minutes long, and it will teach you a lot of history. Also, Randy Dybel, whose family goes back four generations in film and cameras. There's a, a black and white movie of San Diego, including Sunset Cliffs and Ocean Beach, and then um, also the uh, one on Ocean Beach on. Um, Oh God, I'm blanking. I'm sorry. But anyhow, our, our website is obhistory.org and you can go up there. Uh, having meetings, we're putting up some of the movies and programs that we've had over time, but it, it's a great way to learn the history. So anyhow, thank you guys. Appreciate great. it. Thank you all. Um, <laughs> I hope everybody's um, maybe pre-ordering some champagne for after the... <laughs> 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 um pink boob all the way um so um uh yes so uh we'll send out the newsletter if there's anything in the meantime you know how to get a hold of us thank you all for joining uh and thank you for all of the wonderful work that you're doing um to create the good future in terms of um political stuff in san diego and beyond thanks guys you're adjourned at 527 <laughs> You're, everybody's welcome to stay on and talk. <laughs> fine, yeah. totally fine. We're just not having more meetings. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oops. Thank you, everyone. Trying. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Is there any way that uh, the link for Kathleen's uh, book can be shared? Um, let me see if I can find that because I do have her email address, and that might be the best way to get it, like right now. Because I think okay. that. Hang on one second. I know that I do have her email address. Hang on a second. It'd be a great holiday gift, her book. Yeah. Okay, she's she's written a few too. So she has, um, this one is about Sunset Cliffs. And then there's another one that's kind of like a bigger coffee table book. And it's um, like a history of OB in like the 60s and the 70s. It's really pretty, like, it's like a, a bigger. That or what? Like, you guys have that one, Nancy and Stuart? Yeah. Did, did you put it? I bought it at the Black like many years ago. Hmm. They don't. He doesn't. Yeah, it's happy hour time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we should have something like that. Like maybe the day after the election, if we could have some kind of like a happy hour, I hope, like a kind of like celebratory happy hour. Um, well, be should we do that? How about, how about what time do polls close in Florida? Can we have one at that time, please? Yes. <laughs> what time is that? I don't know. Is it? In, I don't care if it's in the night. I'm. I'm sure all of us are going to be just like refresh, 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 refresh. Right. I can look it up. It's probably our time. Maybe uh, six. Probably six. right. Yeah. Let me look it up real quick. Because uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we could certainly do that. I, I, I'll tell you. I'm probably going to need the help that night, Marin. <laughs> <laughs> Th thank you for uh, Susan for sharing the uh, uh, the links there, I, and and thank you, Marin, for uh, for Kathleen's email address. That's that, that's great. Yeah, here's yeah. hoping that it's uh, margaritas on on November third, and not uh, not getting out the bourbon early like we did four years ago. So. Yeah, you know what though, that can be a powerful tool as well because that a lot of people. I mean, I'm not saying that's good. It's obviously like not good, um, but. Um, lots of people can be very motivated to get politically involved is within their local communities when there are those kinds of things like that. I mean, that's kind of what I did where it's like rage. Okay. Action. Right. Um, and so we kind of need to have some places to point those people. Right. Um, I thought it was interesting that she just kind of stomped off. Um, I did too. Yeah. yeah, it it shows it shows that she's not a um, a servant. She doesn't understand that we have the right and the responsibility to keep our electeds on a path that we want, not what they want. I so, agree. I, yeah. So I thought that was just really the article that. Um, that Frank Gormley had in the OB rag about her hubris and her pride. I think we saw it in evidence today. Yes, I agree. And I, I'm sad to see that, especially since she wants to run for um, city council president against Monica Montgomery. I am 
I'm very sad to see that. Yeah. I would rather have, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more class and a little bit more ability to understand that pushback is what she has to expect. And she has to work through that. And that that is our responsibility. I'm just, I'm very upset. I'm very sad to see that from her. Yeah, yeah I, I had a couple of questions for her that, um, you know, she missed the whole question section. Well, how about everybody who has questions for her? Um, we can email her office and say we wanted to ask you these questions, but you were not here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think. Because uh, this is Victoria. Um, I sure. just wanted to ask Deb if she would put her information out there someplace so we could access her. Sure, I'll type it up. Uh, yeah, I'll type it in right now into the chat. I don't think what was said, I mean, I understand that she's that Dr. Campbell is upset about what was said, but I don't think it was anything like offensive or over the line. It was, you know. You know. Okay, I, I think, you know, when you, when you stick your neck out for public office, I think you have to expect to a certain degree that that's going to happen, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, unless it's it, unless it's somebody you know cursing at you or something like that's of course not to be expected. But like, yeah, the the rest is par for the course. I think. Part of it. If we're serious about to get well, this uh, image, also just real quick, um, I see all these pictures of you know of people voting and standing in lines with with their masks on, and I'm just hoping that all those people with masks on are actually Democrats that are voting for Democrats. I would assume they're wearing masks. Probably yes. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's an IQ test. Like it, I, it's an IQ test. Image of this, you know, to keep it going. Yes. Whoa. Thanks. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna look off, guys. But yeah, it was really nice to see you all. It's a. Uh, it's uh, polls close at um, 7 p.m. Florida time. Okay. Uh, most of the. So I'm gonna set up a meeting then, a club meeting for election night, 7 p.m. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I live in OB, so, um, I don't know if anybody, I, I might order some champagne, like from the third corner or something. And if anybody wants to come and stand on this, my, on my large patio with me, you guys mm -hmm. are welcome. Um, and we can do is we can do a zoom too, kind of, a, I'm yeah, it's going to be that way again. Okay. It was really nice to see you all. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Good, take care. Bye. Full power. Bye. We're almost there. <laughs>